Okay, I, I need to explain what's happening here. Uh, last week, and last weekend, and a little bit of this weekend, I made a trading card game. So what that involved was I spent a bunch of time, uh, you know, putting together a basic trading card game. It only took me a week, but it only took me a week because I cheated in so, so many ways. Uh, one of the big ways was that I started from a game that I already know and like and just copied the entire game. So I didn't make up any new rules. Uh, this is just Ascension Chronicles of the God Slayer, a pre-existing game that I like. Uh, I looked at buying a copy of that game, the game that I like, and I thought, hey, I could make my own art and text for this and then have something that's mine. Now, the art and text for this, also, you can't do uh, this much art this quickly. Um, I, like I said, I did it in a week, uh, and it, it takes more than a week to do this much art. Uh, I, I checked it out, and this game has 50 sort of unique cards. It's, they're printed 200 times. There's 200 cards in the full deck, but it starts with 50 totally unique pieces of art, and creating 50 totally unique pieces of art over the course of a week is more than I can do, especially anything that looks like remotely hand-painted. Um, I'm, I'm sort of a cartoonist at best, so I couldn't really get away with, uh, with anything beyond, you know, basic art for 50 cards. So what I've done here is instead, I'm using an artificial intelligence. So this is my GPU, this is my graphics processing unit. Uh, it's been trained on a series of, you know, pictures of actual art, um, and here it's running out of memory because I have a really cheap, well, I say really cheap, I have a, a relatively cheap GPU, so I can only generate small art. Um, so here, I am using my GPU to run an artificial intelligence program that generates art really, really quickly, and it's really abstract, and it's kind of hard to parse, and Using this technique, I was able to create loads and loads of sort of weird abstract art pieces that I could use to build the game really quickly. So what we're watching here is a time lapse of me building one entire expansion for the game. So uh, the, the base game, the Chronicles of the God Slayer, has sort of four main factions of card, which it divides up into uh, Void, Enlightened, uh, I can't remember the other two. There was Void, Enlightened, some sort of foresty shit, and the, the Machina was the fourth one. Anyways, it's got its four suits. Uh, in order to make it work with the AI, I picked suits that were easier things for the AI to sort of get its mind around and generate. So we've got Galaxy, Forest, Garden, and uh, Clockwork as the four major brands of of a uh, card in in my set of the game which I used the AI to generate. Uh, and then I thought to myself, well, if it was that easy to generate the base set, I could also add expansions I and mean, just swap out uh, suits with new suits of, you know, whatever I want. Uh, so I made one that was an orchestra, which a lot of cool cards in the orchestra set. And I thought I would challenge myself and see if I could create a whole set in 3 hours. And I streamed it. I I, I did a live stream on Twitch which is what this is. It's me live streaming the creation of an entire expansion for the game that I made uh, in three hours, um, which I did. I succeeded. Hooray. Go me. Uh, so you're watching me run the artificial intelligence again and again to try to create a whole variety of different trash pieces, trash art pieces, to go in this expansion about trash. Uh, some of them work out a lot better than others, and a lot of times... I will generate the art and then figure out what I want to name it on the card. So here, for example, I created a, a character that I, I just typed Trash Armored Knight into the AI generator, and it made me such a like big, self-important looking character that I thought, okay, I'm going to name that Miles Gloriosus, which is a reference to a, 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 a play from antiquity about a, a sort of a Zap Brannigan-like character. Uh, and so... Uh, you know, if, if you start with the image, you can you can sort of work backwards from that and figure out what the card is going to be called, which is what I did for a lot of these. Uh, some of these, I just made up the, the, like, the name and the concept up front. But here I am trying to figure out, like, actual mechanics, doing some sort of real game design, uh, and 
and I do my best, um, trying to come up with mechanics on the fly to go with my trash deck. Uh, there's a lot of trashing mechanics, a lot of discard uh, mechanics to try to, you know, work with the theme that I'm that I'm uh, that I'm building against here. Also, a lot of these cards are cheaper than the cards in the rest of the uh, the deck. They're but they're also less powerful and less valuable at the end of the game. So you know, trash trash mechanics. So I spend a big chunk of this stream just sort of figuring out the trash mechanics and, you know, trying to figure out how I want these cards to work and sort of interact with one another. And it's good to do that while the AI is kind of chugging in the background because sometimes it takes a long time to make, you know, what I would consider a, a valid or viable image. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, that's, what's, that's what's happening here. I also realized, re-watching this, that on stream or on camera, I just touch my face a whole lot. Just an oh, inappropriate amount of face touching. Uh, it's one of the many reasons why I really, really shouldn't be a streamer. The other thing is I kind of have a face for radio, so, uh, you know, I'm <laughs> let's sh I, I don't know if it's a good idea for me to continue to try to stream things. It's nice to get a time lapse like this, but I think I would prefer to do a time lapse without my face in the frame. Because, you, you know, it's not really that interesting to watch my, my mouth move very, very fast while I touch my face an inappropriate amount of times. Um, but uh, sometimes... Uh, so one of the things here is it's, it's kind of interesting that in, in some cases I'm coming up with the idea and then typing it into the AI and seeing if it generates art for me, and sometimes the art spits out something and I just create a name for it. So as an example, uh, I tried to think of a piece of... I, I came up with a, a mechanic, which was a card that uh, I think does damage uh, or causes your opponents to have to trash cards, and I thought, well, that's pretty aggressive, so I, I th I'm trying to think of, like, what kind of trash is really aggressive? What's the most aggressive kind of trash? And I was like, broken glass. Broken glass is the most ad ad aggressive kind of trash. Uh, and so I named that card Glassassin, um, because I make bad puns all the time. Uh, and uh, after that, I think I, I typed in broken glass assassin into the AI, and the result was sufficiently like a broken glass assassin that I was like, no, that's, that's good. That's all I need. I can just use that pretty much as is. Uh, and that was a one shot. Um, and uh, around this time, we're getting close to the end of the art generation period, but uh, at some point my GPU just crashed. Uh, I was trying to stream and run a, you know, AI generation algorithm at the same time, and there's only so much your graphics processing unit can actually handle. Um, so uh, the stream just failed, and I was like, well, I have to choose between generating more art or continuing the stream. And I was already halfway through my time allotment, so I figured I would just stop and use all the art that I had. Um, on previous runs of this, I've, uh, you know, just kept making art until I had a whole set that I was really satisfied with. Um, this time I had to make do with what I had because I kind of just hit a time limit. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I ended up producing nonetheless. Uh, so here I am moving everything over so that I can start working on this in Photoshop. Um, a lot, of t a lot of times when people are doing this on stream, they've already set up all of their different camera angles and... Uh, you know, layouts in advance, but I'm not that smart. I don't think that far ahead. So, uh, here we are into the card layout. Now, I've already laid out a bunch of these cards. Um, that was, you know, an early part of the project, so when I'm creating a whole new expansion, all I have to do is just copy an existing layout and apply the art that I made to it, which is what I'm doing here. Um, so I start by, you know, just sort of replacing each individual part of this with uh, a new... Uh, a new thing. Uh, one of the things I remembered was that I have to actually upscale all of this art. Uh, you saw how small it was in the other part of the video where it was generating really fast, but it was generating like a pretty small card sized amount. So I'm uh, actually pasting this into Waifu 2X, which is a artificial intelligence upscaler. So it takes small art and makes it into big art by kind of just guessing. Uh, it's pretty good. It does a good job, I think, of making art into bigger art. Uh, which you need to do if you want it to, for example, be a printable size. Uh, I, I uh, Also, because I had that trash butler image, this was originally, the card was called the Wastebasket Imp, because it's a small, cheap card uh, that, you know, it's a small, cheap card in the, in the trash set. Uh, and I was like, Wastebasket Imp, because wastebaskets are small. But I got an image that looks like a butler holding a trash can, so I called it Trash Butler. <laughs> 
I'm not that creative about naming, let's be honest. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's how that one came together. Uh, and so now I'm just sort of assembling all the different bits that go into making the card. I save it, and we're good. That's the first card of the set. Uh, once I finished all of the cards in the set, I think there are nine total cards in the, the set, I'm done. Uh, there, there is a little bit of retouching I do on each of these. The AI art, the AI art is pretty good, but sometimes it's nice just to like give it a little something something to try to make it read more like a piece of actual art. Uh, and I only do about half of these. I only do anything to about half of these, and I don't do much to them. I just sort of give them like a little touch up here or there to try to make them read a little more like something. They're still very abstract. Uh, I really liked the Trash King. Uh, I, I thought, Recycling, Recycled King, Re Recycle King. I don't know, it, it started out as a pun and just kind of went in a weird direction. I think this is the one, of the, one of the ones that I touched up the most because I wanted his face to read a little more like a face. Um, it kind of started out with a pretty jumbled face, and I was like, with a, just a tiny little bit of modifications, I could make this into a readable face. And so I did. Um, I am not nearly as talented at, at this as my wife, Tiffany. Uh, she's done a couple of these in the main set, um, and she's a professional matte painter for um, Atomic. Uh, they make uh, all kinds of, you know, actual cartoons. Um, but I'm just a software developer, so I'm not quite as talented at uh, the, the paint overs as she is. Um, but I'm very fast. <laughs> there is that. Uh, so... I got my Recycle King done there. Uh, I didn't have to do... I don't think I had to do anything to this one. This one, the landfill keep, was just, like, pretty much perfect as it is. Uh, what more could I add? It looks like a keep built on a landfill. Good to go. Boom. Done. Um, and uh, aside from, you know, placing the icons on the card and making sure that it has the right costs, all I had to do was, was lay it together and it was done. Um, this guy, this was the mild gloriosis, the guy who looks just so smug. And I, this was one of my favorite pieces of art that was generated in the whole set. Uh, also, I'm using the fill feature in Photoshop to just fill out the space around him. I kind of wanted to center him a little more in the frame, and I, then I needed Photoshop to do the work of generating art around him in a circle. Uh, I do that again later on, um, but it's a really... Um, neat technique, and again, just another example of all the ways that I'm not actually doing the work here. I'm mostly just letting the computer do the work for me. Uh, so around this time, I'm starting to run out of good art. <laughs> I have maybe one or two more pieces of art that are actually worth using in the deck. Uh, I thought this trash fire was like, eh, it was good enough. It wasn't amazing, but it was good enough for what it needed to do. Um, I, I changed it from Garbage Fire to Garbage Forge. I was like, eh, Trash Fire? Trash Forge, because that feels like some, something, I don't know, slightly more fantasy-themed um, for a garbage deck in a, in a fantasy game. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this one, this one again was really quick. I just used the art pretty much as is, moved on. This is my Glassassin, uh, which the Broken Glass plus Assassin prompt produced something that I felt like, again, didn't need any modification at all. Look at that. It's Broken Glass. It's an Assassin. It's got both. It's just is one and done. Poof. Amazing. Uh, this next one is, oh, my favorite. This was my favorite of the entire set of art generated by the system. Um, I typed in uh, Trash Mage, and it gave me like a trash bag combined with a black mage from, from Final Fantasy. Uh, and I, it's such a good combination that this is, so this is the hefty mage and it's, it's perfect. And it, it needed a little bit of adjustment to kind of fit into its, into the shape that it had been given, but really, oh, it's so good. I, I'm, the hefty mage is my new, my new favorite card and I think the entire deck. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so this whole thing is a, is a print and play, which means that once I've got these, you know, all put together, I start, you know, cutting them out and putting them in card sleeves, uh, which I have footage of, so maybe I'll start talking about that when we get to that point, because otherwise I won't have anything to talk about when we get there. <sighs> and I think with that mage... I am now just completely out of worthwhile art. Uh, and so now I'm starting to hunt around 
in the back catalog. This this was one that I would not have used if I hadn't run out of time. Um, but hey, I can kind of make it look into look like something that's a semblance of of something. Um, like well, maybe I can edit this one into some some kind of coherence. If I had like a face, if I had something that a, a lot of uh, turning AI art into actual art, it's just adding something that looks like a face somewhere, or finding the place that kind of looks like a face and making it facier. Uh, and all of a sudden, a pile of miscellaneous turns into something that's like on the borderline of art. You know, it's abstract, but you can think there's a face there. It must be a person, really leaning on uh, you know pareidolia, par pareidolia. I don't know whatever you call the thing where humans pattern match uncontrollably. You see a face in everything. Um, and yeah, I've completely, completely run out of any kind of usable art now. I'm going through the entire collection just trying to find anything that might be good for the last card in the set. Um, because I didn't generate enough art in the AI phase of this project. And at this point, I'm very much running out of time. I think I have 12 minutes left before I, I consider my, my time limit completely up. So I take this piece of art that I didn't think I was going to use because I described it as it looks like someone murdered a butler and threw them in a dumpster. Um, and I'm like, okay, let's, let's see if I can turn this into, to, in, into anything. And so I was like, okay, well, it looks like it kind of drew a face for me. I'm going to try to turn that into slightly more of a face. Just, you know, give it some eyes, give it a mouth. Good, we've got a dumpster face with a weird top hat. It's a, d a dumpster face character. Trying our best with not much. Oh, and that thing, maybe he's holding a goblet. He's a dumpster face, he's holding a goblet. Um, and at this point, we're start starting to really run into the barriers of what I can accomplish with painting, because, I mean, the AI is actually a much better painter than I am. Um, you know, it creates things that look like actual paintings that humans have done, whereas for me, I'm just sort of scratching on top of it with, with a pen. That's why you don't want me doing most of your, your fixes. But uh, naming this Sir Dumpster Face was a stroke of genius, and I stand by it. So, having built Sir Dumpster Face, I am done. I'm done with the set. I'm feeling pretty proud of myself. I could scroll through the entire set, show them off, and feel good that I was able to essentially design a whole expansion pack for this game in under three hours. Well, it was two, two hours and 59 minutes, so just under three hours, but I managed to do it. So uh, the, the AI that generates these is called uh, VQGAN Clip. Uh, it's a generative adversarial network. So it's actually something that's created by having uh, like two neural networks sort of competing against one another. So one of them is learning to classify art while the other one is learning to create art. And the classifier gets smarter and the creator gets smarter and they bounce back and forth improving the art again and again. Um, it's a really cool piece of technology and mostly I don't understand how it works or how to build it. Oh, now I'm showing off that I have an automatic cutting machine. It's made by Silhouette and it is garbage. It is a it is a trash machine, and I recommend that you never, ever purchase an automatic cutting machine because um, when they work, they're real time savers. The first 200 cards I printed off, uh, I cut 100 of them with the automatic cutting machine, and it chewed up some of my paper, but by and large, it's much faster than cutting them by hand. I think I, think I managed the entire set in, uh, I think I managed 100 cards in like an hour, and the first 100 cards took like four hours. So it did shave three hours off of my card cutting time, but at the expense of it, it definitely chewed up about like 25% of the paper that I, I sent through the machine. And in this case, I'm now just switching to cutting it by hand because uh, the, the machine was chewing up my, my precious paper. And honestly, like the, the cards here, I'm pumping them through a really, really nice inkjet printer. Uh, on like expensive glossy paper and you, once you've chewed through a couple of pieces of a couple of prints that like if you think about it probably cost you 75 cents to a dollar each you're like ha ah, you know what maybe the speed of having this automatically cut for me is not worth the price of losing pages of pages of this like expensive ink so I was just like I'm gonna cut this by hand It'll probably make, and the other uh, decision here was I was doing this on a stream, and so I thought it's going to make better content if I sit here and do this by hand rather than spend most of my time off screen uh, babysitting a printer. I thought I'd try to move my camera over close to the, to the printer and cutter so you could watch the machines go, which is a little entertaining. I can actually just show it to you, though. Like, I can, I can show you what it looks like when the machine is working. I'll 
bring up a clip. wasn't that exciting. You've seen how it works, and now you know. But, like, okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it's cool to see the machine go, but uh, yeah, it, uh, I think, you know, just, just have a little bit of time. I can cut them all myself. Uh, I switched off the computer, because it's like, uh, you're watching me cut pieces of paper. Uh, you don't need to see my entire desktop while that's happening. You see me making those clever editing decisions way, way too late in the game. Oh, there were so many people watching this stream, all two of them, and boy were those two people excited about what was happening. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just the worst Twitch streamer in the world, but I'm okay with that. Um, I'm much more confident doing voiceover stuff. Watching myself, actually, is it's it's the thing is, is that I, I'm not as good at speaking confidently while I'm doing stuff it's a real skill. I don't know how streamers do it. But while I was doing this in person, I was kind of just sort of mumbling into the camera, which is why I'm re-recording this voiceover. Well, that and I have three hours of content here, and I'd prefer to share it with you, you know, in slightly less than three hours, because I feel like you'd probably get really bored. Um, I can't imagine not watching the entire thing and getting a little really, really bored. But it is relaxing. Maybe I'll put it up just so if, if you ever want to, like, chill with me and watch me slowly work on this entire deck of cards, you can. So, uh, I did, I put up an itch page for this project, and so I'm, I'm selling the entire set as a print and play for $3.75, which I imagine I'm going to get so rich. Everyone in the world wants to pay me $3.75 for a print and play set of cards that's just a re-implementation of a game that already exists that you can buy from Ultra Pro for 34 US dollars. I'm pretty sure I spent more than 34 US dollars just buying card sleeves, a deck of regular cards, and like the printer ink and glossy printer paper for this. Uh, I will tell you, uh, using like when you're building a print and play deck like this, just using a set of poker cards and really, really basic uh, card sleeves is a wonderful way to build these because they feel like cards because of the poker card back there and you don't have to do any of that fussy like gluing layers and layers of card together. If you're trying to do this with card stock and varnish, you're going to make yourself go crazy. Um, although I do know some people are really willing to go to that extent. But for me, it's just a deck of regular cards and some sleeves and printing on glossy paper, good to go. Uh, so that's it. Um, I'm, <laughs> we've got to the end of the stream. So uh, I'm going to put up the link to my itch page so you can imagine buying this for $3.75 or not because who in the world would actually want to print and play a print and play? I did. It was kind of fun. I actually kind of enjoyed it. So I don't know. If you would enjoy it too, you could go to the itch page, I guess. Uh, thanks for watching? Yeah, thanks for watching. I mean... This was just a tiny slice of all the time that I spent actually doing that, and it still took almost 25 minutes for me to just do the, the recap. So that was, that was a journey in and of itself. Uh, thanks for watching it. Thanks for watching me touch my face an inappropriate amount of times. I'll, uh, I'll see you all later.